It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. Today I'm really, really excited to bring you a big battle video. Now this battle video is between a giant in stout brewing and that is Guinness. And this is their draft stout, 4.1% ABV in a 440 milliliter can. Draft with a widget. Now I was at London Craft Beer Festival last year in the Tobacco Factory and I spoke to Mr. Ansbach and Mr. Hogday and they said to me come and try our London Black so I went down to their stand and I tried their London Black on keg and it was fantastic it was really good um the question I made a video if you want to watch the video the interview between Ansbach and Hogday but the question I asked them in that video was is it going in cans? And it, it was a kind of a work in progress. That was last August, it's now March. So that work in progress has been seven months, eight months, but here it is. Here it is in all its glory. And Spatch and Hobday, London Black, independent Nitro Porter, 4.4% ABV. So why am I excited about this? Well, I've put up stats before, haven't I? Camden Town Stout, 4% ABV, put it up against Guinness. I thought the candle was a bit watery. Brewdog's Jet Black Heart, Black Heart, whatever they call it these days. That was all right against Guinness. Conor McGregor's Stout, The Forged. I liked that, I really liked that. But they were all kind of, the candle was 4%. It wasn't quite enough for me. This is 4.4% 4. 4 ABV. I think this is going to be kind of like the perfect ABV for this style of beer. Now, already you're probably thinking, oh, this guy's leaning towards the London Black. Already, um, he knows the brewers. But I will stand here and I will tell you 100%, this will be a 100% independent beer review. If the Guinness is better, I will tell you. If the Jet Black, if, if the London Black is better, I will tell you. So without further ado then, let's get them out. I was sent the beer by Anspach and Hobday and they also sent me a lovely little glass to drink it out of. I'm not gonna be using this glass today. The reason for that is I wanna keep it fair I want to keep it real. So I've just got some pint pots of the same style, zero widgets in the bottom of the glass, or etching. So let's go, let's do it. Let's do it. Guinness. Nice sound with the widget. Little bit of splurge on the top of the can. Let's pour it. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. There's your Guinness then. That's what it's famous for. That's why I think People buy this stuff, they buy it, they see it, they think, oh, look at that. It looks mysterious, doesn't it? One finger, tan, coloured head. Lovely, lovely look to the beer. Jet black, nitro poured beer. Anne's Batch and Hobday, London Black. Independent nitro port of 4.4% ABV. This is 470 milliliters, so slightly more beer by 30 milliliters. <laughs> Again, slight splurge out of the top of the can. And there it is.
then it is one to two finger tan colored head jet black beer in the glass lovely lovely look to the beer as you rock the beer back and forth let's rock these two beers back and forth then yeah they're both doing a very similar thing you can see that kind of very small carbonation chasing the head of the glass the london black has a slightly darker head the london black is black the guinness is black there's no light bleeding through whatsoever so as guinness is the lower of the abv as the guinness is 4.1 percent abv let's get into the guinness first aroma creamy a little bit of roasted malt, a little bit of fruitiness. A little hoppy, a little syrup-like. Both beers have been out the fridge 10 minutes, just to warm up slightly. And they warm up slightly just to get a little bit more flavour. Here we go. A little bit roasty. Caramel flavours coming through. Syrup. A little bit of like a, a brewer's syrup going on. A little bit of sweetness coming through. That sweetness is balanced off with bitterness. I can totally understand why people buy and enjoy this drink. Super slick, super smooth, creamy, rich, drinkable. Yeah, I mean, four cans of that. Saturday afternoon watching the rugby. Pretty tidy, pretty tidy. Decent beer. So what's the reason why all of these companies are now bringing out nitro stouts? Hamilton have done it, Camden Town have done it. Um, boom, 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 have, there's, there's a few, there's a few players in the market now. Conor McGregor, I mentioned with the, with the, with the Forge, Brewdog have tried it. And I think what they've all done, they've all recognised that Guinness has such a stranglehold on the market of stout that they, they want to kind of challenge it. They want to kind of. Like, like have a little bit of the, the, the Guinness pie, if you like. And why not? Why not? Especially if you can brew a better beer. Let's dive in. <laughs> and my goodness. If you're a stout fan, if you're a stout drinker, yes, absolutely, absolutely, this is a better beer. It's the roasted malt just rolled and rolls and rolls and rolls. There's some chocolate flavours coming through. There's some a little bit of caramel flavours coming through. Bitter dark chocolate, a little bit of tobacco smoke, pipe tobacco smoke flavours coming through and some roasted coffee flavours coming through. Fantastic bitterness on the beer, little bit of sweetness with that caramel. Being a nitro beer also has that absolutely kind of wonderful, creamy, rich mouthfeel to it. The aroma, didn't get the aroma, but I kind of got it as I, as I was about to drink, I could always breathe in and, mm. The aroma is so kind of fulfilling and 
in your face. In your face. What a beer. What a beer. For me, if any of these nitro stouts are going to challenge Guinness to the stout nitro crown, then it's going to be this beer. It's going to be London Black from Ansbach and Hobday. This is utterly, utterly delightful if you're a stout drinker. Mm. Look at the lacing on the glass compared to the Guinness. The Guinness looks controlled. The Guinness looks less. This, this looks like a stout that could have been sat on the bar in the 1950s. Great lacing, great head retention, great look to the beer. Whereas this, this is very kind of like 2000s, isn't it? Guinness probably have, they've had a long time to kind of what they think perfect a glass of stout. They've had a long time to do it. They probably got a lot of kind of computers and machinery and they're probably using AI now to kind of make the beer look like that. But this, this is just better in every sense. Better aroma. Kind of the same mouthfeel, they're both creamy and rich, but the flavours, the flavours on this London Black are tremendous. Let's give them side by sides. Guinness. Oh my goodness me. Going back to Guinness after having a mouthful of this is... Like I, I, I just said, you know, yeah, yeah, Saturday afternoon watching the rugby, four cans of Guinness. Going back to it now, kind of like, no, I probably wouldn't. I'm... I would, I would probably just buy this instead. Mm. Roasty, toasty, biscuity, bready, nutty, chocolate, coffee, caramel flavours coming through. This is delightful, delightful beer. Delightful beer. Fantastic. So... Back of the can on the Guinness, brewed in Ireland by Guinness & Co. Um, it's Diageo, spirit company. Um, St. Ja St. James's Gate Brewery in Ireland, that's all it kind of says. We have a story on the back of this can. Inspired by London's brewing heritage, this is a truly sessionable London porter. Brewed for a smoother mouthfeel, perfectly balanced with Cascadian notes of coffee and velvety chocolate. It really has. A beer that champions the rich history and heritage of London's porters and modern independent brewing. The result is London Black. A beer that is easy drinking whilst full of character. So very quickly before I go, I'll tell you what I'll do. <coughs> I'll rate the beer for the people who want to go. And then if you want to stay and listen to my story, you're very welcome. Guinness Draft, for me, 6 out of 10, 6 out of 10, nothing, nothing overly wrong with it, it's just, I think Guinness have got really comfortable, they got really, really comfortable with, with their being number one of the, of the Nitro Stout sellers by far, and I just think they've rested on their laurels a bit, a lot. Um, people have tried to chip away and to take Guinness's market share for a long time though. Um, Camden Town Brewery, with the backing of AB InBev, might have had a bit of a chance, but they made their beer at 4% ABV. It wasn't enough. This, this beer here, from an independent brewer, Nitro Beer, this is the best challenger. This is the best challenger to, to, to Guinness. But of course, being a smaller brewery, it's having the funding 
to market this beer on the same level as Guinness can market their beer. And that's probably for a smaller brewer, practically impossible. The best way, the best way to get this beer out there to the to, to, to your mates and get people get get this beer in the hands of the stout people is if you're a beer fan, if you're a beer lover, spread the word. Word of mouth. Get it out there. Get it posted on your social medias. Speak about it. Help this brewery out because they've created something magnificent here. It's a magnificent example of a nitro stout. If I'm in the market for a nitro stout, I'm buying this. It's a, it's a Stone the Crows 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 from Real Ale Craft Beer. Thanks for watching. Story time, if you wish to stay. <clears throat> so, London Porter. Probably way before Guinness, actually. Yeah, 1759. Before the Great Fire of London, back in the times where London was very... London's always been congested, hadn't it? Little alleyways linking up parts of London, little back streets, no motor vehicles. <coughs> you had your London porter. A bit like a hospital porter. You've seen a hospital porter, haven't you, with a, with a truck and some boxes or whatever on. Shuffling things around ho hospital corridors, moving beds around. Think of that on a grander scale. Think of that in London with no cars and, and, and little alleyways where you couldn't get a horse and cart down. You had your porter, man with a sack truck, running around delivering stuff. That was hard going. That was really hard going. So what that man did, or what the brewers did, was brew something very nutritious and, 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 and fulfilling for that person. And that beer was Stout and Porter. Here it is. Here it is. This, this is the very drink that goes right back hundreds and hundreds of years that kept the working man, the London Porter, full of nutrition and able to do a day's work. Give him lots of energy. 10 out of 10 for the London Black. 6 out of 10 for the Guinness Draft. That's where the name Porter come from. I hope you liked the video. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beard and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom. Cheers.